Welcome back to another Crypto Gorilla video. I'm seeing a lot of people interested in investing in token presales. They want to get into the angel rounds. And the demand for this has only increased with successes like Portal, which was a 55x out the rip, where if you put in 20K into the angel ticket, your investment at one point was worth over $1 million. Of course, it's vested over time, but even your unlock on TGE was worth six figures. Now, if as I said those terms, you were like, what is he talking about? That's exactly why I'm making this video. I'm seeing a ton of people full send into these pre-sales, not doing any research, and they don't understand the basic terms of these investment deals. So in today's video, I'm going to explain what these terms mean, as well as take a look at some live examples. Now, I understand this video might not be as appealing as a, you know, top 500x tokens that are yet to release, but I do think it's important for people to understand this because people are just throwing their money at the wall and not understanding the implications. So before looking at the terms of a deal, let's quickly quickly look at a token just to understand what goes behind tokenomics. There's four things you have to look at. Here we're looking at the parallel token called Echelon Prime, been performing incredibly well, up over 10x from the lows, but that doesn't matter. The four things we're going to look at are the total supply, the circulating supply, the market cap, and the fully diluted market cap. So first, total supply, which is 111 million. This is the total number of tokens that will ever exist. And the other one that we compare it to is the circulating supply, which here is almost 36 million, which is the number of tokens that are available on the market, trading on the market. And the reason it's not equal is because there's a lot of token unlocks that haven't happened yet for their investors, for the team, whatever. Now, the reason this is important is when we compare the market cap to the fully diluted market cap. As you can see, the numbers are different. Here it's 900 million, here it's 2.8 billion. And the reason for that is the market cap considers the circulating supply, so the tokens that are trading on the market times the price versus the fully diluted market cap. This is the total number of tokens time the price. So when I'm looking at these investment deals, the thing that I'm considering is the fully diluted market cap because my money is invested over two, three years with those token unlocks. So I wanna know what's my total investment going to be worth. And for that, we need to consider the fully diluted market cap. Now, if there's only a very small amount of tokens that are released on the first day, it is really easy to manipulate this. So for that, I also look at what the market cap is. And another thing you need to consider is as more and more tokens unlock, there's gonna be more supply available on the market, so more sell pressure. Therefore, the price does tend to go down. Although with the bull market, with more people coming and buying, that's when the price goes up. So it is important to consider when unlocks are happening, especially if you're trying to buy in on the secondary market, it's good to understand when the unlocks are coming and when a huge supply of tokens are being thrown onto the market. But a lot of coins use market makers to defend the price of their token. Cool, so now that that is out of the way, let's take a look at some terms for a deal. For the sake of this, we are gonna look at some real terms. However, I've made this fake deck with fake terms. I'm not launching a token, this isn't real. So the first thing here is ticket size. This is how much money you're able to put in to the investment. It's either gonna be a fixed amount or a range. Here I put a range of $1,000 to 10,000. I made these numbers up. So the minimum amount you have to put in is $1,000 and the maximum is $10,000. Now, if you only have $1,000 or $2,000 in crypto to your name, I probably, me personally, I wouldn't be even considering doing these types of deals unless it's launching really soon and I feel it's a lock. I feel like I'm gonna get a great multiple on my money because if not, I'm locking up a huge part of my liquidity or even all my liquidity if I only have a thousand bucks and then the opportunity cost is really high. If another place shows up, I can't do that because I have no more money left and the token might be launching in four months. So what I would do instead is focus on growing my bag before getting into these types of deals, whether that's through altcoins or if you're a bit riskier through NFTs and meme coins, whatever you feel comfortable with. Next, we have the TGE date, which stands for token generation event, which just means the day the token is officially launching, when it becomes tradable on centralized exchanges and DEXs. And not every token is available on every single exchange. Again, you can come to CoinMarketCap and down here you can see all the exchanges that this token is available on. 
Next, we have the TGE unlock, and this is how much of your allocation is sent to you and available to trade on the first day. So for the sake of this example, let's say I bought a million tokens for $10,000 and my TGE unlock is 10%, I would receive 100,000 tokens on day one that I am free to trade. Now there's no standard number here. This could be 10%, it could be 40%, it could be 0%. It's in your favor that this number is as high as possible because that gives you more freedom, right? You have more money to play with. But typically I see anywhere from five to 15%. I am really not a fan of 0% on TGE, but it is what it is. Next, we have both the cliff and the vesting. So the cliff is a period where you receive zero tokens and the vesting is a period where you receive your tokens over time. And this can be daily unlocks. It could be weekly, monthly, quarterly, whatever the team decides. So for this, let's jump into the Pixelmon tokenomics since their public presale and all their tokenomics are public, I'm allowed to share it here. Their TGE is 20%, very favorable. So let's say, this is not how many tokens you're getting, let's just pretend you get a million tokens total, you get 200,000 tokens on day one that you're free to trade with. And then if we scroll to the side to vesting and cliff, they have a six month cliff. So six months where you don't get any tokens and then their vesting period for the community presale is 24 months. So. 20% of a million, you get 200,000 tokens on day one, and then your remaining 800,000 tokens, you get zero for six months, and then the rest is over a 24 month period. So you would do 800,000 divided by 24, and that's gonna give you the number of tokens you are getting on a monthly basis. So that's why I say you have to consider these are long-term investments, because after that 20%, you are waiting a total of 30 months to get 100% of your investment, but it's even longer than 30% because you invest in these things and they don't launch the next day. A lot of the time it takes a week, a month, a couple months, whatever it is. So it ends up being more than 30 months. So with that in mind, there are two things I consider in terms of these long timelines. The first one is what are my odds of breaking even at TGE? On day one, what are my odds of getting my initial investment out or more? I get some profit with it. And for this, we need the final piece of the puzzle, which which is what FDV are they raising at? FDV stands for fully diluted value. It's essentially equivalent to fully diluted market cap. So price that they're raising at times the number of tokens. And I don't remember what the FDV was for Pixelmon. So we're gonna use my fake deck here uh, for this example. Here I put 50 million as the FDV, shows that number at random. So the team is raising at a $50 million value and my TGE unlock is 10%, meaning I get 10% on day one. So in order to break even on day one, I would need the fully diluted market cap to be a minimum of $500 million or more. And the reason I like to break even at TGE is because, you know, I'm putting in a thousand bucks. And then if I get to pull out a thousand bucks on day one, I can either save that money or I can go invest it into something else. I could redeploy it. But now that investment, that remaining 9%, I'm playing for absolutely free because I already took out my initial a thousand dollars. So I love deals that I feel I can break even on day one. And if not day one, ideally within the first three months. So if there's a really long cliff and I don't feel I can break break even on the first day, I kind of avoid those investments because there is that opportunity cost of just holding crypto, right? I can, a lot of us are probably selling our ETH, our Bitcoin, our Solana, our meme coins, whatever it is in order to invest in these deals. And those coins are also going to go up hopefully over time. So you're taking an opportunity cost by investing in these tokens. So if I'm not going to get my money back within, you know, I'm not getting it back right away. And then I have to wait like a nine month cliff. ETH and Solana is probably going to have two to three X in that time. So why wouldn't I just hold my Solana? The second thing I always consider with a long timeline is where are we going to be in the cycle by the time I get my money? If you're familiar with the concept of the four year cycle, crypto has for the last three cycles moved in these periods of four years where we get a period of bullishness after the Bitcoin halving, followed by a crypto winter, right? We hit a top and then the prices start to go down and then it trades sideways for a while. Now, if this 
pattern plays out again, the top should be in the fall of 2025. Now there's people who think because it's so bullish right now before the halving, this cycle is gonna be much shorter. There's some people who think it's a super cycle because BlackRock is here and they're gonna buy all our Bitcoin. It's gonna go on for a very long time. I'm not here to debate which one of those situations is going to happen. We can't predict the future, but if we use the data we have, like I said, the top should be in October of 2025. So let's just pretend that's actually what's going to happen. If I'm considering a token right now that's planning to launch their token in July of 2024, I get nothing at TGE and it's a one year cliff. So I get no money for one year. And then it's, I don't know, 24 months of vesting. By the time I get that first vesting payment, it's going to be July, 2025. But I just told you the top of the cycle is gonna be October, 2025. So I only get a couple of months of bullishness with my first unlocks and it's going to be slow unlocks. I don't get a 30% a at TGE here or a 30% at the first unlock. A majority of my unlocks are going to be during the downturn of the market and in the bear of the market when things are trading sideways. So that's the other thing I consider. Where am I getting majority of my money? Is it in the bull or in the bear? And I feel with everybody full sending into all these deals, Teams are getting a lot greedier. They're giving us higher FDVs. They're raising at stupid valuations that they shouldn't be raising at because people don't care. They're just full sending and their terms are getting longer. I'm seeing a longer cliff. I'm seeing up to a year cliff now where you get no money. And then I'm seeing, I think I saw up to like five years of vesting. So you're pretty much investing for the next cycle. So I don't know, with those kinds of deals, it might just be better to either hold your crypto or if you're really bullish on their token, why not just buy it on the secondary market? If you think it's gonna go up, instead of having you know three years of vesting, yes, you get in at a higher price, but at least you're getting that multiple and you're able to sell, right? You have the freedom with your money. So these are the things I consider when it comes to the long timelines. Now with my fake investment terms, at the top you'll notice it says strategic round. This is another thing you have to consider. Look, there's seed rounds, angel rounds, strategic rounds, uh, KOL rounds. There's a ton of different rounds, but the point is that some some people are going to get in at better terms than you. Some people at worse terms than you. Often for KOLs, uh, key opinion leaders, fancy way to say influencers, we get better terms, right? I get better FDV, so a better entry, better cliff or no cliff. I get quicker vesting, whatever it is. We get better terms. So that's something you have to consider, especially when you see KOLs or influencers bull posting stuff. They're often able to sell a lot sooner than you, meaning they might stop talking about the project by the time they have sold their position. So things might get a little less bullish for that project. So that's something you need to consider. Also, VCs might have better terms, right? They can always dump on you. Now, I know what your next question is. I'm not a KOL. I'm not a VC. How do I get access to these deals? Well, there's a few different ways. The first way is by holding an NFT that's going to give you a pre-sale for their token. We saw this with Memeland, Pixelmon, Block Games, Games.gg, and we're about to see it with Kibi. And a lot of the time, these deals through NFTs are favorable terms. For Pixelmon, it was really good. For Block Games, it was really good. The only one we've seen come to fruition now that performed really well was MemeCoin. They raised at 69 million and it is currently at 2.5 billion FDV. So an amazing multiple for anybody who got through the meme coin sale. The downside is this only gets you access to one sale, right? The sale for the NFT. So if you want a constant flow of deals, you're going to want to get in to one of these groups or an investment syndicate. Now, what an investment syndicate is, is a group that brings deal flow to a community of people. As an individual, you can't get on these cap tables, but them pooling everybody's money together, they appear on the cap table as one entity. So they're able to get the deal flow. But you also need to consider that there's either going to be a membership fee, often quite expensive five figures, or there's going to be a management fee. Now I have my own syndicate. I started last year called Wizards Capital. It is is absolutely free to join. We've brought a ton of deals to our community. There is a management fee because we have employees to pay. We have to do research. We have legal fees. And of course we want to make money. If you want to join Wizards Capital, I will put a form in the description down below. We are very selective with who gets in. We are only as good as our members. So don't be upset 
if you can't get in. But if you're looking for another group, maybe one that you can buy your way in with an NFT or a membership, there's a ton. There's Citizens Capital from Neo Tokyo. There's Gojira. There's Steady Stack. There's Nexus by Hustlepedia. There's OMG Underground Momentum. I know Funkari's doing this. I know Ryan Decrypto with Vinland. He's bringing deal flow to his community. So there's a ton of options to get your hands on this deal flow. Now, the third way you can get deal flow is through launch pads like Seedify, Paid Network, Polka Starter. If you just jump onto Crypto Rank and click IDO Launchpad Return on Investments, you're gonna see a ton of launch pads. You're gonna see how much they've made with their deals. For example, let's just click on Seedify. We're able to filter by either all-time high returns. So one of their best deals was almost a 700X. Please consider if you held on to it until now, it's only an 8X. But we can also click on Return on Investment and one of their best deals in a more recent time roughly one year ago was chain gpt which is performing really well with the whole ai cycle and it is currently a 38x so if you want to check out this site and explore different launch pads i'll put a link for that in the description down below in order to get access to these launch pads you are going to have to buy their token and stake it and then on top of that Obviously you have to invest your own money into the deals with stable coins. So not the tokens that you purchased. The one downside here is these platforms do KYC, which is know your customer. So you are gonna have to prove to them who you are as well as where you live. And there's a lot of countries that are banned like USA. It's not them, it's you. It's your government's laws, which are extremely outdated. They're basically forcing you to choose poor. But if you do find a way to get access to these launch pads, they can be extremely lucrative, especially ones like Cedify, which have a seven day refund policy where as long as you didn't touch the money, as long as you didn't trade the token, you can get a refund on your investment. So it's literally risk free. So that's it for today's video. I hope you found it informative and educational if you did or if you still have questions let me know in the comment section down below if you enjoyed it give it a big thumbs up it really helps my channel reach a wider audience if you haven't already subscribed would you kindly hit that subscribe button smash that bell notification thank you for watching crypto gorilla peace